Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to load data to tables according to the Excel sheet names from Excel file or files dynamically in SSIS package. Let's open this folder and see the Excel file structure here. I have two Excel files here. I'm opening the one and that has a sheet name called the customer. I have ID, name and date of birth as columns. And let's close this one, go to the next Excel file and take a look. Here I have a uh, two sheets. So one is customer and uh, the other one is a product. So I see that product ID and product name. Now, if you are expecting more tables to come in your Excel file, let's say uh, sale per year or something like that, you need to create these tables in advance. I have another video where it will create the table for each of the sheet. I have another video that uh, where it will create uh, a table for each Excel uh, uh, file itself uh, so and load the data but here in this scenario we know that tables are already there we need to just uh, uh, load the data from these uh, different sheets according to the name um, so I need to have customer and product uh, table names uh, so I need to create these tables first uh, let's go to the techbrothersit.com and find uh, this post and then we can go from there once you are at techbrothersit you will be going to the SSIS uh, video tutorial and uh, then you will be coming to the heading called script task and under that you will be going to the excel uh, source and destination and then here we will find that uh, on number 13 load data to the tables according to the excel sheet names from excel file dynamically i will put the link here so you don't have to navigate all the way by yourself uh, as as of now i don't have the video so i don't know where to put the link so i have to show you uh, here I have product and customer, customer and product. So, so you see that there are multiple uh, or uh, even a uh, single sheets on one of the Excel and we need to load that. Here is our definition for our tables. So take that, go to the SSMS. I'm going to create these tables, but before I do, I need to drop the existing table. I drop the table, fine. Now we go ahead and create a new tables new query paste your code here and run this one both tables are created and they have no data as of now let me write the select for them so we have select here it's taken some time anyways uh, while it is taken some time uh, let me copy this on the same query window so we can see right so right as of now these uh, uh, tables do not have data we haven't loaded the data we need to create an ssis package and then uh, we'll load the data from excel files uh, here right click on the ssis packages a new ssis package and uh, let's create some variables uh, so we can use the values of those variables in our ssis package and also use uh, these variables in the configuration and pass the value to these variables when we are deploying the packages to the qa uat and production uh, to make our package dynamic so we don't have to make any change in the package by changing the values of these variables we can load different uh, uh, files from different location and uh, uh, th th that's important uh, you know now what we need first of all we need a folder path that's where our files are string and i'm going to save the folder path in that one copy and go here uh, next part as we will be reading the files from the folder we need to load the files to the sql server tables we need to create a connection Go to connection managers, go to new ADO.NET connection and here make a connection to the database where you would like to load the data. So click on the new and here you will be providing a SQL server instance name and then database name. So I'm waiting, we are going to use SQL 2016 and I'm going to use Tech Brothers IT database. That's where my tables are. Tables are customer and product as we have the same sheet names in our Excel. So let's rename this part, uh, rename, and I'm going to call this one uh, DB connection instead of uh, Amir PC and SQL. That. So once you use this one in configuration, you can tell right away, hey, this is uh, the connection manager for Tech Browser IT database. Uh, we are all good here. Now we need to bring a script task here. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and read, uh, use this variable 
the folder path folder path variable click on edit script we'll be going back to the tech browser it website and copy in the c sharp script to use in our editor and uh, let's go back here uh, one more thing you see here uh, the tables can exist uh, in uh, different schemas so instead of uh, just assuming that uh, DBO schema I created one more variable called schema and you can use that one so maybe it's in sales database or in the other database so you can um, sorry in other schema so you can use uh, different schemas and uh, you don't have to come back and uh, make changes to the package so let's go back make that change real quick at least create this variable so close this uh, window and uh, save it fine and now we are going to create one more variable because our tables can be in any schema so in my case they are in dbo but in your case maybe that you have different schema so we want to make it in a way dynamic so tomorrow in production maybe it's in sales schema those tables should be there so you will be just changing the value for this variable by using the configuration and here it will be sales fine come back script task add a variable find a user variable because uh, this is a where user variables schema name and then edit script come back to the this website and uh, here first of all we'll be adding these namespaces let me copy this namespaces from here and then we are going to go to the editor and paste it there under the namespaces right here in the, this region see there are already namespaces added to it so I'm going to hit enter and paste our system.io system.data.oladb because we are reading the files so this uh, namespace will be used we are reading the data from Excel so this namespace will be used and we are writing the data to the SQL server so this namespace will be used we will use different functions from these namespaces uh, next part you will be coming to the public word main function and here we will be pasting our uh, other code so you can see under uh, public main uh, void main that's where we need to paste this code copy this code go all the way till here and then copy if you don't like this part some part see the script is on the right um, right side and is going beyond this page limits uh, so but that's not going to throw us error we are good but if you don't like this part copy from here you can always go to the download script and here I have uploaded the scripts to the Google Drive and uh, they are more cleaner you can uh, just copy from there it's uh, exactly the same script but just sometime uh, it, it get messy when you post on the um, that HTML code and all that so that create problems so from here public word main you can always go back all the way till here and you see before the DTS does task result uh, copy everything and once you are done you come back to the editor and we are gonna post paste uh, right there we are all good I will uh, hit save button and do go to build and build uh, um, so if there would be error or anything we will see the error and we can fix it build succeeded that's great but there are still some things that it missed Lo let's uh, see here we have a folder path folder path is exactly same variable name fine and we have schema name so we created these variables and use SSIS uh, uh, variables uh, to get them the value to these variables uh, now let me show you the part, uh, one thing I was saying uh, it should throw error but it did not here you see that we have a uh, user edu dot and connection so connection manager in my package is it not DB connection so it is a DB underscore tech brothers uh, but it did not even give error so um, with the script task uh, that's the problem if you have a uh, wrong variable name or even a uh, connection manager name is not gonna throw error if I will let's say if I have folder path one here this variable does not exist in SSIS and if I will save it and uh, build it it will build this success successfully once I run it it is gonna throw error so that's where you need to pay attention and uh, have the variable name uh, exactly the same you have in SSIS uh, package because these are case sensitive and also you need to take care of uh, the connection manager it should be the exact same what you have in your package let's uh, make some space here and read through the code and see what it is doing so we are declaring the variables 
and then same in uh, the value from uh, those uh, package variables here and here I just declared a variable uh, table name because uh, it, it's, it's just a blank for now and we will be reading uh, uh, as sheet name is going to be table name so we are good here we don't need to bring from the SSIS package we will uh, okay uh, with, with this folder path go to this directory and get all the files information this part of the code is going to do that part so once we have the file information uh, so we have list of the files uh, we can loop through them and use them here I'm declaring uh, this uh, string full path uh, so we can use uh, the folder path plus uh, the uh, file name to create a full complete path for our Excel file on each of the iteration so that will be used in connection uh, uh, once we open a connection and start reading the uh, Excel file now this for each loop uh, we are uh, looping through we say oh, get one book uh, Excel file one at a time and then uh, okay this will be full complete path for that Excel file here I'm declaring two variables I'm saying okay string uh, con connection string and string HDR uh, that's a header header is yes because we have the header in our uh, Excel sheets and uh, this is the connection string so that's going to be use uh, provider Microsoft AC.12. Uh, sorry dot OLEDB.12.0 and uh, this is a data source uh, this is our Excel full path that's where our Excel is uh, use these properties here and then uh, uh, use this connection string uh, to create a new instance of OLEDB connection once we have it we are going to open that connection uh, and here uh, we are creating a new data table in the memory and getting uh, the OLEDB schema table information so once we have that uh, that's going to give us the sheet names uh, and everything we can extract the sheet names from uh, DT sheets uh, data table I'm declaring a variable called the, the string sheet name here put in or uh, saving as a blank uh, see I'm not a C sharp developer I just declare it here and set the value here that is that can reduce one line I could have just simply say is equal to and here see you can make changes if you are a C sharp developer or .NET developer you can change a lot of things and make this code beautiful and remove some line of codes as well because I, I, I have made the things I have done in two lines maybe you can do in one line now once we have the sheet name then uh, we this is a variable we declared and then we are going to loop through this uh, dr sheet that's our data table in the memory and uh, then we will see okay if this table name does contain uh, the dollar sign that means okay th this is the sheet name so we get that uh, table name and uh, save into the sheet name so we got the sheet name once we have the sheet name that is equal to the table name remember we are loading the same sheet name to the table and table name should be the same as our sheet name and uh, I don't need the dollar sign added to it so I replaced because table name will do not have a dollar sign added to it now load the data table with sheet data so it can get the column header this part of the query is uh, where I'm doing some validation so you, if you don't feel like doing it you can remove this whole part till here what exactly it is doing uh, it is uh, uh, reading the top uh, one uh, row that's the header and then uh, putting into the DT data table then w I'm looping through building that string uh, for the column list of Excel sheet uh, then I'm going against uh, the SQL server and see the select query I have written here I have used a schema name and Excel header columns and I try to get the matching column from the SQL server table and then uh, I use uh, this uh, uh, ADO.NET connection and run this query and save the matching column into the SQL column list in this case see in my scenario if there would be extra column sitting in my Excel file that will be ignored let's say if I have address here ABC this column will be totally ignored because uh, I do not have address uh, in uh, uh, my DBO customer uh, table so in, in my scenario this is how I am handling I'm saying okay just find the matching columns and load them in your case uh, you might say no fail that uh, package because that's not right to load we should have different scenario so in I have a created a video where it will take the information go verify against your table if uh, it's exact match it will let it load otherwise it will not so watch that video uh, remember I was showing you right here so all the list of the videos is here on Tech Brothers IT under the 
let me go one step back here and you can see right here so see how to load matching sheets from excel to table and log not matching sheets information into sql server table so you can take a look on that part take copy that script and use it if you would like but my case okay if as long as there are columns they are matching i want to go ahead and load the data so this is going to give me column sql column list uh, here as I got the matching columns from our sheet and uh, SQL server now I can use those columns and just read the data for those columns from Excel so I'm using a, uh, using the Excel again connection string and I'm saying select column SQL column list there's the matching columns from sheet so now I get all the data once I get the data I'm putting the data into the DT1 data table 1 and then I'm using SQL bulk copy and saying destination table schema name plus the table name and schema name remember this is the coming from our SSIS variables here on top DTS dot variable user schema name and table name is the sheet name so okay and then once it has it it is going to map the columns and load the data to the SQL server table from DT1 that's it so what happened on top of that we have a loop for each of the file here and then uh, we have loop for each of the sheet so if there is only one sheet is gonna uh, take care of one if you have 100 sheet is gonna take off care of 100 if you have one excel it is gonna load a one excel file if it has 100 excel file, it is gonna load 100 so you don't have to worry about number of excel files or number of uh, sheets on each of the file it, it should take care of everything uh, now we hit save come back here save come to the sql and here we are going to go ahead and run our SSIS package it's so uh, working right now it is taking some time it completed successfully that's great now we come back to SQL run the query and you see that data is loaded uh, uh, to the customer there was only one customer there was two customer sheets actually and there was only one product sheet so that is loaded for those all the uh, customer sheets and uh, for product sheet so tomorrow if you will have let's say if the new uh, table is added somebody say okay I'm gonna go ahead and add a sale um, sale table and they will give you with this one what what will happen it has only one ID and uh, one now what we see here as long as we will have a sale table it will be able to uh, work just fine for us so we need to do one thing here as a new table or sheet is added we will say create table dbo.sale and id integer I'm going to truncate these tables or let, let it be it doesn't really matter uh, as long as we have just one record coming into this table this is different type of testing I always do I, I, I recommend you guys to do as well so you can uh, learn uh, different things from here so as see there is only one column and uh, we don't have any data but the new sheet is added in this uh, file so if new columns are new tables are coming and they have exact table matching there it's gonna work just fine it will never have a problem you don't have to worry about that let the people add the sheets and as long as they match with our table definition so stop it go to the package run it now the these ones have duplicates because we have reloaded and then the last one should have only these see id and id one and two that came from this one that's great now the, till here is great uh, if you would like to remove those files uh, we can use uh, simply we can uh, write into the um, script as the file that delete and just pass the path for that excel file or uh, you can use the file uh, system task to delete the loaded files so it, next time it will run it will not load those files uh, archive those files I have a videos how to archive those uh, loaded files with the date time and all that so you can do that thanks very much for watching this video and uh, I appreciate your time I will put the link for the script to use in this uh, video in the description 
description of this video so i recommend going there and uh, take a look from there i hope you learned something out of it and uh, once again thanks and i will see you guys in the next video